In this lecture, we are going to talk about loops. Uh, so the first loop that we will be talking about is if loop. I am going to make use of two different variables uh, for explaining you the concept of if loop. So A has got this value 23 and I have assigned B with this value 45. Now let's define a condition over here. If A is smaller than B, then print A is greater than B. So because this condition is true, so that is the reason we are going to get this output. However, if you will define a condition like this where A is greater than B, then because this condition is not true, so we will not get any output here. Now, if suppose, uh, see if you have got two numbers, so there are three possibilities that you know either the numbers can be equal to each other, one this number can be greater than this number, A can be greater than B or B can be greater than A. So there are three possibilities. Now how can you check all the three conditions using if loop? So for that what you can do, you can make use of elif keyword so full form of elif you can take it at, you can uh, take it as else if nahi to so if translates in hindi to agar agar a is greater than b then this should happen nahi to else if nahi to agar a is equal to equal to b then a is equal to b this should be the output nahi to for nahi to the keyword that you can use is else else okay i am getting an error why just because i haven't placed a bracket over here so that's the reason i was getting an error nahi to print see if this condition is true then this should get printed if this is not true then the compiler is going to come on, come on this part okay now it is going to check whether a is equal to equal to b or not if it if this condition is true the compiler is going to print this otherwise it is going to print this thing so else in the else part we define that we define that thing which we want the compiler to print as an output uh, in case all the conditions that we have defined inside the if loop are not true. So finally, uh, we would like to see this as an output B is greater than A. Now let's see what are we going to get. So what is the value of A? It uh, A is equal to 23 and B is equal to 45. So uh, this condition is not true for the values that I've showed you. This is also not true. So because these two conditions are not true, we are not going to get this or this in the output part. However, we will get this part that we de that we have defined in the else using else statement. Okay, using else keyword. Now let's talk about what is shorthand if. See, if you are writing something like this, if A is smaller than, if A is greater than B, okay, and in the same line you are printing the result also, A is greater than B. What is the value of A? It is equal to 23 and B is equal to 45. So I think this is not true for these values. Let's change it to this. B is, is smaller than B, A is smaller than B. So if you are defining the condition as well as printing the output in the same line, so it will be, why am I getting an error here? Let's see why we are getting an error
Okay, just because we haven't enclosed this thing in double inverted commas, that's the reason we were getting an error. Yeah, so this is what shorthand if means if you're defining the condition as well as printing the output in the same line. You're uh, passing the print statement in the same line, then this is what shorthand if means. Now let's talk about nested if. See, you can have if statements inside if statements. This is called nested if. For example, if suppose let's have a value in this variable x. Now let's define a condition x is greater than 10. Okay, if this condition is true, I would like to see this output above 10. Okay, this is what I would like to see. If in case x is greater than 20, I would like to see this output. Fine. Just a second. Else. Else I would like to see this output but not above 20 okay so this is what you are going to get as an output now what is happening here I have defined this if loop inside this if loop if this condition is true which is okay because for this value of x which we have defined over here this condition is true so this thing is going to get printed now once the compiler is done with printing this statement in the output part, it is going to come here on this if loop. Now it will check this loop also for this condition. So this is also true. So that's the reason we are going to get this also in the output. Fine. Let's talk about while loop now. See Python has two primitive loop commands, while loops and for loops. With a while loop, we can execute a set of statements as long as a condition is true. Remember this thing. With the while loop, we can execute a set of statements as long as a condition is true. For example, if you are given with a value, with a variable, having one as a value and let's define the while loop here. And inside this, you need to define a condition. Fine. Uh, now let's print the value of y here, i here and here we are going to make i is equals to i plus 1. So this is what you will get as an output. Now why are you getting this output? See initially the value of i is equal to 1. Let me make help of this. Let me take, let's take help of this notepad. Now if suppose you're given with a program like this and you want to find out the output of uh, that program, you can make use of the dry run method. In this what happens, you have to write down the name of the variable and here you first of all you need to identify the names of the variables which have been used in the program and then you can write down the names of the variable uh, like this and after this you can make a separate column for the output part, for showing the output part. Now here uh, when the compiler will execute this line it is going to initialize the val uh, variable i with value 1. When it will come on this line, what it what this line is saying while i is, is smaller than 6. While translates in uh, translates to what in Hindi? Jab tak. Remember this thing. Jab tak i is smaller than 6. While i is smaller than 6. So print i. Print the value of i. So in the output part we are going to get 1 first. And then once the compiler is done with executing this statement, it is going to come on this line. Now here what is happening? The value of i is getting incremented by 1. So 1 at present value of i is equals to 1. Alright. When we will add 1 to this value of i that is 1, automatically the result will be 2. And 2 will be initialized to this i again. So that is the reason the new value of i will be 2 now. Okay, once the compiler is done with executing this line of code, it is going to go back here to find out whether this condition is true for this value of i or not. 
So for this value of i also, this condition is true. Now the compiler is going to come back on this line and print the value of i. So this is what we are going to get as an output. Now again, the compiler will come on this line and increment the value of i by 1. And we are going to get this output. Then we, it will be 4 and we will get 4 in the output. Then it, it will be 5 and we will get 5 in the output. Now when the compiler will come back here again on this line, the value of i will become 6 and when it will, it will return here, so for the, for the current value of i, for this value of i, this condition is not true. So the compiler is going to come out of the for loop. It is not going to execute these two lines of code. That is the reason we are getting this as an output here. Fine. The while loop requires relevant variables to be ready. Okay, remember this thing. With the break statement, we can stop the loop even if the while condition is true. Suppose, let's define this while loop again here. What is the value? What is the current value of i? Let's find that out. So the current value of i is equal to 6. Okay, let's make it equal to 1 again. Now let's define a while loop. I'm copying this whole code and putting it here. Okay, and after this, in place of this, let's define an if loop. If i is equal to equal to 3 then what should happen break okay I would like to break the statement and here let's uh, define this thing i is equal to i plus 1 now let's see what is going to happen when we'll print the output so this is what you are going to get in the output part now why these two values are not coming which were coming earlier just because we have defined a loop if loop here now what this if loop is going to do when i the value of i will become equal to 3 it will break this while loop so this break what this break will do it will it will throw the compiler out of these loops so this condition will not get execute executed after this and the compiler will come out of the loop and that's the reason we are we will be getting only these three values in the output we will not be able to see these two values now okay now let's talk about for loops see a for loop is used for iterating over a sequence that is either a list a tuple a dictionary a set or a string this is less like the for keyword in other programming languages and works for more uh, like an iterator method as found in other object oriented programming languages. Okay, and let's suppose there are, th let's say there are three items in this list with name fruit. Okay, now if you want to loop through this list, so this is how you can do it for x in fruit and sorry I didn't made use of that colon I haven't put that colon after this for loop so that's the reason I was getting an error earlier let's print the value of x and this is what you are going to get is an output so with for loop you can loop through a list tuple or anything you have got the for loop does not require an indexing variable to set beforehand fine let's uh, see if you want to loop through the letters uh, like say in a word like banana so you can make use of for loop again for this okay uh, again I haven't placed that colon after this for loop that's the reason I am getting an error so this is how you can loop through the letters in the word banana fine now if you want to just a second let me assign let me define 
this list again over here with the break statement we can stop the loop before it has looped through all the items this is also a very good keyword that you can use with for loop break now how you can use that that's what we are going to see print x so it is going to print the value of x now when the value of x will become equal to banana i would like okay again i haven't placed that colon i would like the statement to get break means i would like the compiler to get out of the for loop so only these two items are going to get printed in the output part the other items will not be printed fine so that's how you can make use of a for loop hope you really like the lecture please do like and subscribe to my channel and also please do share the link of this video with other students